The following special program is designed to recognize extraordinary examples of leadership. From HTC Headquarters, the Director of Communications, Tom Vitt. Hello and thanks for being with us. Real Kids began 20 years ago. It was born of a request to the HTC Marketing Department to create a program that would recognize children in Horry County Schools who faced challenges in their lives. We in marketing accepted that challenge and created a program that has lifted the spirits of the children, of the families, and of the communities served by HTC. And we've done so with a program that is worthy of national merit. Now this year's program was to be up to our typical standards, but we've had our own challenges to navigate while we recognize these deserving students. So how do we do this? Well, the kids show us that adversity makes us stronger. And with that in mind, the show must go on. And now, it's time to present the nominees for the Real Kids Awards for the year 2020. Here's your host, Aaron Ford. Thank you and welcome to all of you who have tuned in for this special event. And it's my pleasure as interim host of Real Kids to have interviewed 28 nominees as part of the Real Kids family of hundreds. And we'll do just that after you see this from HTC. And welcome back to the 2020 Real Kids class. And we will start by introducing nominee number one through 12. And Brent Groom will toss it over to you for the medal presentations. Thank you, Aaron. Wow, as we look around here, it's not quite the Marriott, but unfortunately, with all the wonderful things that are happening in our world with COVID-19 and the pandemic, we were forced to make some decisions considering the safety of both the, the Real Kids recipients, the families, the supporters, and this is where we are. So I apologize for that, but I hope you uh, take it in the spirit of everything that's happening today. And again, we still recognize you as a great asset to our communities being HTC Real Kids. So with that, let's go with the first 12 nominees. From the Academy of Technology and Academics, their senior class, Claudia Felder. Uh, she's a warm girl, she's a very caring girl. Um, and you know to choose her as a real kids uh, candidate was, was very easy. Um, as a student, you know Claudia currently carries a 3.2 GPA. She's interested in uh, being an EMT at some point in time, and she planned on uh, studying uh, that program in Ori Georgetown Technical College. From Blackwater Middle School's eighth grade class is Alexandria Johnson. Allie was in my sixth grade math class. I'm watching her go through her treatments and struggle through that and still make straight A's. Um, she's an amazing student and has a bright future ahead of her. St. James Elementary. In the third grade, Zaylin Moody. He's made a lot of growth academically. I see him as an entertainer. I see him as a comedian, maybe a singer. He has an amazing voice and I think he needs to share that with people. From Carolina Forest High School senior class, Jose Pimentel Vasquez. Very hardworking student. Through these three years, he has learned to advocate for himself. Straight A's. I mean, he's just come so far in three years, and I couldn't be more proud. From Conway High School's senior class, Kristen Narcisi. It's unbelievable how far she's come in such a short period of time, battling all through the things that she that she has. Real kids, they've overcome a lot of adversity, but they've also been leaders at the school, and she fits that. From the Early College High School's junior class, HTC Real Kid, Florence Cook. Florence takes on any challenge. She's currently taking college classes and high school classes. Does very well. You would have thought um, she grew up in a pretty easygoing environment, and it's actually the total opposite. From Ten Oaks Elementary, eighth grader Kylie Hunt. Just so impressed with her in sixth grade, just because she was so resilient and she was so positive, and despite going through all that, I knew she was going through a really tough time, and um, I just knew she was a special kid. Um, I was so proud of her. From Burgess Elementary. Third grader, Caleb Pettit. He's so confident in himself and just amazing. I mean, he's such a leader to his classmates. 
Um, his smile just lights up the room. I mean, just a sweet, loving, loving child, just always happy, just a real breath of fresh air. From Carolina Forest Elementary, second grader, Tisa Meyer. Tisa is just full of life. Everybody's friend, even with what she's been battling all this time. So she, you know, she has a lot that she deals with. You know, despite all of that, I mean, he's always worried about everybody else. She's my hero, honestly. And from Conway Middle School, eighth grader, Kinley Jones. Kinley's fabulous. So positive, sweet, sweet smile every single morning. She is on the tennis team. She is president of student council. Um, she is in the junior beta club. She does a million things. From St. James Intermediate, sixth grader, Aiden Bellamy. Aiden is a very likable young man, and he made the honor roll throughout all last year, and he's already made it this year, too. There's not a person who doesn't know him and who doesn't love Aiden Bellamy. All the children love him. They want to help him, and he wants their help. And from Green Sea Elementary's first grade class, Jocelyn Russell. Jocelyn, she was diagnosed with Wilms tumor. She and her family are very strong, and they persevered. And she kept up great grades, and she was able to start first grade right on track with her peers. So we congratulate this first group of Real Kids nominees, and with that, back to you, Erin. Thank you, Brent, and I hope you're ready for a quick turnaround because we're ready for you to announce the next 12 nominees. Ready to roll, Erin. I've got the next 12 right here, and we're going to start with Ocean Drive Elementary 5th grader Max Venegas Lagos. He is always there giving his best effort, and he shows such great quiet leadership in everything that he does. I will say he still maintains straight A's and gifted and talented classes. He does better than most students who have spoken English as their only language. From Homewood Elementary, fifth grader Taji Riggins. He works so very hard in everything he does at his reading and his math and working on relationships with his peers and he has made a lot of progress with that. So we really enjoy having Taji at Homewood. From Socasty Elementary's fifth grade class, Devin Cottom Marin. I brought Devin. How he really tries to um, do his work, and I give him the instructions on something. He says, "I got it." And then he'll help someone else. Them, he's always helpful. Asks questions and is interested in the work. From Myrtle Beach Early Childhood, Don Yor Abdullah. Don Yor is the perfect person for this. He uses a wheelchair, but tries so hard to be independent with everything. And he's now in the child development program, which is a full day class. From the Academy of Science, Technology, and Academics, senior Paula Garcia. Paula is a great student. Um, she gets involved not just in the school, but in the community as well. I can definitely see her as a nurse, especially for pediatrics. And I've just seen her interact at the pediatric unit at the hospital, and so I can definitely see her doing that and doing it well. From Socasty Middle School, eighth grader Whitney Argerbright. Whitney shared her experience with me, and it really touched me, and I realized, you know, this amazing student that I have, true leader in my classroom, had a lot going on behind the scenes and these things that she had gone through were pushing her to be a better student and a better athlete, and just a better individual in general. From Seaside Elementary, first grader, Vinny Antidormi. Vinny is just a real kid superhero, but he's had some challenges for sure. Each day he shows up with a spirit that's ready to learn and ready to get after it, and he's really just working hard each day. From Waccamaw Elementary, fifth grader, Quadrell Graham. His progress from second grade, now he's a fifth grader this year, has been tremendous. And it's all because of his perseverance and his dedication. I mean, he takes school so seriously. And we're just beyond proud of him. A senior at St. James High School, Pearson Thames. He just fills your heart with his smile. Super positive, super sweet. Everyone that knows him will say something positive about him and just being a great student. Um, I think he's a great role model and um, a great asset to St. James High School. From Midland Elementary, first grader, Bailey Alford. Bailey is the sweetest, most energetic bundle of joy. She is so awesome in the classroom. She's 
very active in class. Um, she's very well behaved and she has great manners. She's very smart, very intelligent, and she's just a wonderful student all the way around. St. James Middle now represents by eighth grader Tyler Gardner. Kind of rough at the beginning when we first met and by the end of the year he was back on a full day. He is one of our role model students now in our classroom who I'm now having other students look up to him because of the transition he has made since March. And from Riverside Elementary, third grader Jada Edge. Jada and her family has experienced lots of hardships. Some kids cope differently and, and Jada chose to she just chose to excel. Um, I think when we're looking at your definition of a HTC Real Kid, she exemplifies that. Awesome young lady. Congratulations to our second set of nominees for HTC Real Kids. Now back to you, Erin. If you're just joining us, we're introducing the 2020 class of nominees who are joining hundreds of other Real Kids. And there's more to come right after you watch this from HTC. <laughs> Welcome back to the introduction of the 2020 Real Kids class. So Brent, you're on again. I've got the third group ready to go. We're going to start that with Loris Middle School student, 7th grader, Sadia Bellamy. We call her Sadie. She's a leader on the cheerleading squad and she's also musically talented. I feel like that's helping to boost her confidence to be able to do anything she puts her mind to. From PD Elementary, fifth grader Dariana Green. A fantastic fifth grade student. She's the sweetest little girl you'll ever meet. Super funny, very intelligent, very bright. Everyone loves her. Um, she's just got that natural drive to not let um, the single cell hold her down. She's fantastic. Representing Myrtle Beach High School senior class, Sophie Orcutt. She is a wonderful senior, um, involved in so many things at Myrtle Beach High School. But despite all the things she has endured in her life, um, she has such a positive spirit, such a energy. She is one of the highlights of my career. From Myrtle Beach Primary, second grader, Melissa Weaver. I brought Melissa Weaver, and she is just that, a real kid. She has had some, some experiences in life I could not imagine. Melissa has just come to school every day. She's been working, doing her job. Um, she's just a real trooper. Representing Lakewood Elementary, third grader, Jack Rhodes. Got tons of enthusiasm, lots of questions, lots of personality. He's had some medical issues, some surgeries, and he just bounces back and comes back better than ever every time. Like he's bouncing today. Yeah, he is. He's having a good day. <laughs> From Forestbrook Elementary, fifth grader, Caroline Ely. Last year, her father passed away very unexpectedly. Changed her outlook from being sad to being very positive and looking on the brighter things. She's looking ahead and not behind. Palmetto Bay Elementary, fifth grader, James Torres. I brought James Torres. He is just an outstanding example of growth in academics and in social as well. Every time he comes to the door, he's ready to learn and he has made wonderful progress. From South Conway Elementary, fifth grader, Olivia Baldwin. Olivia's been through a lot of foster homes. Um, I'm proud of her because I've seen the transitions that she's made and the positive that has come about and it's a great outcome of what she's dealt with in the past. Representing Green Sea Middle School, sixth grader Skylar Rabin. As early on in the school year she lost her mom to illness and I just think that through it she just showed courage and perseverance and she just hasn't, she's just shown that she can make it through and I think she's a good example for others. From Kingston Elementary, kindergartner Maggie Tyler. Maggie was actually nominated by three. Um, first, it was our principal, Dawn Brooks, by her teacher, Beth Rankin. And then the third nomination was from our school nurse. With her being so young and having so much knowledge about how to treat her own medical condition, I mean, she's amazing. From Ocean Bay Middle, seventh grader, Maggie Smith. Maggie is a seventh grade student who, even though she has many obstacles, um, she 
just walks right in, smile on her face every single morning, no matter how tired she is, no matter um, how much homework she had the night before, Maggie is, has the most positive outlook on life. From Loris High School, senior Jacob Black. It didn't take me long to figure out what kind of a person Jacob was and the struggles that he had uh, had to overcome to get where he's at. Uh, he's a tough kid, does all the things that you think every kid should do. He's just one of those kids, what he, he's an encourager. Very, very rare these days. It's amazing to me. Our next group of Real Kids nominees are in the book now, so Aaron, back to you. Well, more will be coming your way soon, Brent. I bet some of you are wondering, just how do our nominees receive their awards this year? Well, the medals have been sent to the representative schools to be picked up by the honoree or family member upon showing proof of identification. So if you don't have your medal by now, check with your school. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the abbreviated version of the Real Kids Award Ceremony. And if you're just joining us, we're in the middle of introducing the Class of 2020 Real Kids and have many more to honor. But before we do, let's take a look at the medal they receive. You've probably seen students clutching it, but have never seen one close up. Well, let's take a look. As you can see, the box itself is beautifully wrapped in velvet, and when opened, you immediately see the rich golden finish, reminiscent of any high-level Medal of Honor. The size and weight give the recipient an impression of Olympic Games quality. It's something to be treasured. Brent, I know you're standing by because there's a lot more for you to do. But before you continue with the awards, I'd like to thank you and everyone at HTC for allowing me to serve as interim host until the perfect person was found to host the Real Kids program. I have thoroughly enjoyed my time here with the associates with whom I've worked, the presenters from the schools, and especially the kids. They've all been very special during this time in my life. So now, I would like to introduce to all of you your new host for Real Kids, HTC's Leslie Causey. Thank you. It's nice to be with you, Erin. And of course, it's great to be a part of the HTC Real Kids program. So when we come back, Leslie will be your host. Well, I suppose it's time to turn the program over to her and say one final time, thank you. It's been my pleasure. And more Real Kids Awards are coming right up. But first, there are a couple of people who have shown interest in our Real Kids program and who have some encouraging words for our 2020 Real Kids class. First, our State Senator, Greg Hembry. I am so excited to be here today to congratulate the 2020 HTC class Real Kids. Uh, Y'all have overcome some remarkable things and have been an example to others in your community, in your families, in your schools, and we are so proud of you. My name is Greg Hembry. I'm State Senator for District 28, and I also happen to serve as Chairman of the Senate Education Committee. So I spend a great deal of my time working on issues that involve your schools and, uh, and our community. Uh, we are so uh, proud of you, happy for you, and uh, we're in the middle, of course, of a pandemic. Uh, we are all going through challenges, disruptions, things we didn't expect to have to go through, just as you are. But you have gone through additional difficulties, hardships, uh, trials and tribulations, and you've per persevered. You've succeeded. You've overcome. And that has been a terrific example to those around you and to your community. So we are uh, here to say thank you for being a shining example to us. Thank you for, uh, for all that you do in your families and in your communities. And to say congratulations. And we're so excited to see what you're going to do next because your future is ahead of you. There's so much that you can accomplish. You've shown that you can overcome. You've shown that you can persevere. You've shown that you, you can succeed, and you're going to continue to do that, and we're really proud of you. And from her office at the South Carolina Department of Education, we welcome Molly Spearman, the Superintendent of Education. Ms. Spearman, we're glad you're with us. It's my honor to congratulate you students on being recognized as H. 
FTC Real Award winners. It means that you have persevered through very challenging situations and shown great leadership. Congratulations to all of you. And parents, family members, thank you for working with your students because it shows that you have helped them to, to develop into really strong human beings. And HTC, thank you for taking the time to recognize these great students. Our South Carolina Profile of the Graduate says that we need to make sure that every student who graduates high school has the content knowledge that they need, as well as the skills and characteristics to be happy, productive citizens. This award helps recognize the character that you students have developed. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you for your work in your community. God bless you all and best wishes in the future. And we'll be back for more awards right after this. As you notice when we started off, a lot of things have changed, uh, <laughs> including the set that I'm being recorded on. But before we get on to this next group, I'd like to recognize a couple of folks that have stepped up and filled in, helped real kids along the way. And first of all, that's Aaron. Aaron has uh, stepped in to be our host as we were transitioning. Um, Ms. Nicole Hyman departed from HTC and she's now with Ori Georgetown Tech and we wish her well there. But Aaron uh, stepped in and, and filled in, and partway through, we hired a young lady by the name of Leslie Causey. Uh, Leslie has introduced herself to you and will be our new host. And I'd like to take this time right now to say welcome aboard, Leslie, and thank you for what you're doing and helping with Real Kids. So with all of that said, let's get back to the Real Kid nominees. The world situation that we're in today dictates how we do everything, even down to how we produce this program. Because of this factor, we were not able to record video of the remaining 17 students, but we were able to gather comments from their presenters. So, we decided to make phone calls to teachers, counselors, coaches, or whomever to gather these comments live. Brent Groom, you're up to bat once again. A senior from Ainer High School, let's welcome Teresa Hope Jolly Perry. She's been a very conscientious student and she puts forth a lot of effort in the classroom and she's just proven to be a leader through her resilience and she's always been determined to achieve and she's just an inspiration and a, a joy to everyone she meets. From Forestbrook Middle School, let's welcome eighth grader Emily Wright. I'm honored to nominate Emily Wright as Forestbrook Middle School Real Kid for the 1920 school year. The reason that I nominated Emily is she is a brilliant student, first and foremost. She um, is an assistant in the program and has taken numerous high school credit classes. From Loris Elementary's fifth grade class, Anila Brown. Very smart, very motivated on the A honor roll. Not only that, but Anila is a good leader. She demonstrated those skills that, that you are looking for as a real kid. From Daisy Elementary's fourth grade class, Lacey Clark. She just got that nature about her. I feel like the Lord placed in her that she took and decided there wasn't a pity party. It was just about her making it, and she did it. And she pushed through and got through almost to the eighth grade level from a fourth grade. I've never been so impressed with a young lady. Senior from Green Sea Floyd's High School, Tyndall Hunter Huggins. Tyndall is a great student who makes A's and B's and is in the top 20% of her class. Despite having to overcome many obstacles and having to be relocated during her senior year, she is a leader amongst her peers. She is a great friend to others and is what we think of as a great example of a real kid. From Annual Elementary, fourth grader, Caden Cobb. Caden deserves recognition because he is a phenomenal student who works hard, makes good grades. That's why I nominated Caden for our real kids, and he is a great leader among his students at our school. From sixth grade class at Myrtle Beach Middle School, Zachariah Davis. He's always so respectful. Um, sometimes he'll, he'll say, have a blessed day, Ms. Burr. Um, he's just so sweet. 
Um, he makes great grades. Um, he's in orchestra. He's involved in school. Um, he's just all around a great kid. In your middle school seventh grader, Ashley Mariah Fuller. Ashley Fuller is a 7th grade student with us at Aner Middle School and our real kid for the 2019-2020 school year. She was able to maintain an A average in all of her classes. She was successful in making and maintaining friendships and keeping her emotions in check. That's our newest group of HTC Real Kids. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to you, Leslie. Because we're doing the program this way, gift packages were mailed to our Real Kids students. This package included their medal, a note from our CEO, Mike Hag, their Real Kids t-shirt, and a $100 gift card to a local restaurant in their area so the students could still celebrate with their loved ones. And we'll be back for the awarding of the final 10 medals in just a moment. So if you're sitting there waiting for your child's name to be called, don't worry, it will be. And we're back for the final group of students awaiting to officially become real kids. Brent, tell us who they are. Okay, Leslie, we're down to the final 10 nominees for this year's HTC Real Kids. And by the way, with these 10 nominees, we will have recognized over 1,000 HTC Real Kids over the years. That's quite an accomplishment, and we are very honored to have recognized all of these kids in Horry County. Quick shout out before I go to these last 10, to a couple of folks that stepped in and participated in this year's video presentation. State Superintendent Molly Spearman, we thank her for agreeing to participate. And State Senator Greg Hembry from North Myrtle Beach, a big thank you to both of them for stepping up and participating in this video. Okay, on with this, I got the last 10 nominees here. Our first nominee in our last group is a fifth grader from Waterway Elementary, Thomas F. Berry. He always tries to be a good role model for other students and he helps out in any way that he can. He tries to make sure that he's a good friend to everyone that he meets and he's a great asset to his school and this is why he was nominated as an HTC Real Kid. From North Myrtle Beach Middle School, 7th grader Jerafel Torres Phoebus. His nominee says that he has proven himself tremendously and continues to work extremely hard in order to learn the English language. He shows outstanding leadership qualities and is a true example of a student that should be nominated for the HTC Real Kid recognition. From Ocean Bay Elementary, first grader, Chase Stump. He loved school and he didn't want to miss a minute of a leadership in him and he was very responsible in class. He would tell me things that he would do at home for his little brothers. He was very creative and very artistic as well. And a senior from the Scholars Academy, Elizabeth Lizzie Cheravano. She um, really went out of her way to be um, somebody um, that everybody could be proud of. So we're real proud of what she's done. And it's really kind of neat to watch a kid come into their own and go, oh, wait a minute, I can do this, and if I can do that, then I can try this. There are no barriers for her. From River Oaks Elementary, second grader, Ian Missler. He's got tons of friends. Everybody adores him. The fact that he went from not speaking at all until four to getting tested for DT, I thought that that definitely would qualify him for a real kid. Um, and I just think he really, uh, really deserved this award. From Whittemore Park Middle School, 8th grader, Angel Nicole Bethay. And Angel was just a fantastic, outstanding student who persevered through tragedy and actually has triumphed over that tragedy. Um, and that is why Angel Bethay, I believe, should be one of the real kids. From Conway Elementary's 3rd grade class, Jason Aaliyah Taylor. Aaliyah is a great example of modeling classroom expectations. We can always count on her to assist and befriend students who have other needs. She goes above and beyond academically and socially. She's a great example of what we would like to see in all of our students here at Conway Elementary. An 11th grader, Socastee High School, Juan Castaneda. 
we think that he was a good candidate just because of some of the hardships that he has overcome and there just really have been so many um Juan has a kind heart is hard working and absolutely determined to be successful from Myrtle Beach Elementary fourth grader Cameron Barry Cameron has faced medical challenges. You truly would never know by looking at her though because she carries that I've got this attitude. Definitely a leader in the classroom. She never wants anyone to feel left out. She constantly is um, involved in the community as well. Representing the senior class from North Myrtle Beach High School, Janya Livingston. She is a positive light to everybody and She's remained at the top of her class. Her heart is pure. She's genuine. She is just so deserving of any positive recognition. And I hope that um, this real kid recognition does a great job of doing that for her. Okay, folks, that's all the HTC Real Kids we have for 2020. Leslie, what would you like to say to wrap it up? It's my pleasure to say to all of you welcomed into the Real Kids family. We're glad to have you. And to those of you watching at home, thank you. We'll see you soon as Real Kids continues for the 21st season. And we hope you've enjoyed this abbreviated medal ceremony. It is our expectation that we will return in the future to producing the type of ceremony that HTC has been noted for in the past. Until then, follow social distancing guidelines, wear your mask, that will help keep us all safe. I'm Tom Vitt for HTC. Mm -hmm.